afternoon. If you're going through struggles, Jesus will stand by you. We've got some people testifying to that today. Like myself, like John, like Pastor Steve, like Kiri. We've been through troubles. God understands you and loves you and holds you up. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone. Before we do, I'd like you to welcome my wife, Mrs. Christine Giles. You give her a great big clap. She's going to read. She's going to read a little bit from the Bible. Uh, you guys know the Bible. There it goes. This is from Job. You ready? You, you got to intro it a little bit. Okay. Um, Job is a guy who had a lot of shit happen to him, and um, and God said to him, and he was just saying, why, 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 God, why are you doing this to me? And then God actually spoke to him and said, Who is this that blocks my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself and I will question you. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb and when I made clouds its garment and wrapped it up in its darkness? Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? I've shortened it down. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? What is the way to the home of light? And where does darkness reside? Do you know these things? Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail? What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? Will the one who contends with God come and answer him? So God was just talking all about all these amazing things that he's in charge of. And Job said to him, whoa, I am so unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I had no answer. Twice, but I'm saying no more. And Job said, I know now that you can do all things, and no purpose of yours can be stopped. You said, Who is it that can obscure my plan? Surely I spoke of things I don't understand. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself. I think it's just a reminder to us that God's just charge of much bigger things like the sun coming up every morning, the oxygen to breathe all the time, the beautiful flowers growing even though they're weak, they're still smiling. It's just amazing that God is so big and really we don't understand what he's doing. Woo um, just to finish that, there's another quick one from Revelation 4.11. It says, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. We're going to take a short break just to chat and make some friends. We'll be back in a few minutes. But don't forget about the Lord Jesus. Remember, He didn't forget about you. Take time out for the Lord Jesus, He took time for you. Thank you, man.
My sweet Lord. Oh, there was me My sweet Lord. My sweet Lord. My sweet Lord. I really want to see you. I really want to see you. I really want to see you. I really want to see you, Lord. And it won't take long, my Lord. My sweet Lord. My sweet Lord. I really want to know you. I really want to work with you. I really want to see you, Lord. And you will take on my own. My sweet Lord. My sweet Lord. Oh, my Lord. I really want to see you. Lord, yeah, oh my Lord, Here, there's a seat right beside the door. Okay. Okay, Alan, I'm going to come to church. I went in, went to the side, sat by the door, being quiet, not making a noise so anybody can hear me or see me or come talk to me. 
and the dry coat. So I went in sat here. Right. I'm glad Richard was actually giving the message. So I'm sitting way back here. Right. At the door. Yeah. He's up there talking. And when he spoke, it was like he was talking to me. It was like he had written, he'd seen me there and he'd written down the message specially for me. And uh, I, I started crying. But, as soon as he finished talking and everybody stood up, I was out that door so fast and then it was like flash in my car. I'm not going back there again. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. No way I'm going back there. But God had touched my heart that day. And after that I went back to church. And I found that the, that the church that I was that I was in, there were some people there who were just full full of the love of God. And they had such joy in their fellowship. It was so good. Anyway, the fan the church that I started in just met me where I was. And I learned a lot about Christ there. And I learned a lot about God and the Holy Spirit. Just recently, in September, my husband passed. It was hard work, and I missed it, but you know what made it easy? The knowledge I have of Christ, the knowledge I have of the Holy Spirit, and of everybody God. In the times when I was really down, you may have heard of this phrase, um, a peace that is beyond all understanding. Because of the love of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit in my downtown to my really down like um, And it is possible to feel this, but I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. I was reminding reminded of scripture that says that he loves me. I was reminded of of places where he has met with me. And I was reminded just that God loves, and His love is beyond all understanding. You know, in that time of in the stories, the time of mourning. You know, when you stand in a storm, or it's something going on around you, and you should be going, ah! I'm standing there going, yeah, God, you're with me. You've got me. It's, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, God has got me. Jesus is with me. Holy Spirit with me. But. When you stand there, and you're supposed to be, people would say that you're supposed to be going, ah! and you stand there in the middle of that trouble, and you have that peace that can hold you together, that can still your thoughts, that can still you, and enable you to be, that's our God. And that's the God that loves you. And we're not going to have to love you, musical accompaniment, you. but just follow along. You know, don't worry about the guitar. Don't worry about this is the day that the Lord has made. He will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. He will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. The goodness of the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Now, this is a day that has been specially made for each one of you, for each one of us. I pray that you will come away from this time knowing something special has touched you by the Holy Spirit. Just even a little bit of inkling that, to know that you're not alone, 
that you are loved and God is real. God bless you, darling. Thank you. to hear from my friend John. Gerard, can you put your hands together? He's going to share a few words about his life and how, how he's just grateful to God for his love. Thanks, Ingus. G'day, everybody. I'm Johnny. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Kiri's talk. Yeah, that, that was fantastic. My dad was from uh, New Zealand and uh, he was a Parkia, they call him. And uh, he uh, played cricket for Palmerston North and Rugby and uh, he was born in Wellington yeah so anyway uh, he came out here on a ship with his seven brothers and sisters in 1941 during the Second World War uh, my grandfather died of uh, a, a heart attack he was about 38 and uh, through alcohol and drug addiction uh, prescription drugs. He was a very, very smart man, my granddad. He wrote songs for a, um, a music troupe called Flanagan and Allen, which wrote a lot of songs during the war, you know, for uh, like people like Vera Lynn and other great singers. And um, I take after my granddad. I love to write songs and I love to sing. And, um, you know, when I... Uh, when I was about 15 or 16, I was a very, very nervous young man. And one day my uncle said, get a bit of this, uh, you know, homemade wine in here. Well, I took a big drink, don't worry about that, and everything went calm. I suffice to say, by the time I was 17, I'd been in trouble with the coppers about 10 times. Um, I was a full-blown alcoholic at 18. And um, I wasn't partial to... Uh, a bit of a white, a bit of goey, a bit of anything that was there to supplement the alcohol. I was in a lot of, I was in trouble. I was in a big mess. But Tom, I was 21. Um, you know, I started to break down physically. Um, I remember having to go in the hospital and have an operation and um, I wasn't allowed to have any alcohol. So I wasn't allowed to um, have a drink to calm the nerves. And per, per, I noticed the peripheral the neurites, that's the right way to say it, start to set in. By the time I was 27, I started to go blind in my left eye. Um, you know, phone was ringing when it wasn't ringing. People knocking on the door when they weren't. And um, people trying to kill me when they weren't. I was in a very, very bad state of paranoia from the alcohol and the drugs. And anyway, one day... Um, an old bloke, it's funny how God works. 
and it just came through with Kiri's story there before, you know. My mum went to school with this little fella in Corra, in New South Wales, and he, he came across to me, he said, um, I don't know why I'm knocking on your door, but there's an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting tonight, would you like to come? <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, just tell me the truth, if, if you want to come, I'll come and get you, if not, I'll go away and I won't ever bother you again. I said, Keith, I'm in big strife, mate. I said, I can't stop. I don't know what's going on. Now, I went to that AA meeting that night, but on the Sunday, that was on a Saturday night, on the Sunday I was in a pub, and I was drinking again, and I thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do anyway. I was in the pub toilet, and this is amazing how God works. He was born in a manger, and he came and visited me in a pub gunny. That's what he does. That's what he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. I I was washing my hands in front of this glass vanity, you know, and uh, I just felt him wrap wrap around me like a big warm doona. I knew I, I knew it was God because it couldn't have been anything of, of man. And I know the Satan the Satan doesn't like anyone human, so let's let's get ran down to business. It was God, you know, and um, I just felt him say to me, "It's going to be okay." I don't know how I thought that or whether those words were in my mind or they come out of the glass mirror. I don't know. But anyway, he said to me, um, he just it just felt like he spoke it into my, my being, you know, you're going to be okay. And I did. It took me weeks and weeks to work out what to do, you know. And these guys at AA, they said, look, we can't stop you from having a drink, but this is where you need to be. But, you know, there was, through that encounter, I went to a, um, a rehab. The drug and alcohol rehab, a real well done one up in the northeast. And um, the lady, there was a lady, and she was a Catholic nun. <laughs> and God works in mysterious ways. And she said, "Hey, do you, do you really want to live a better life?" And I said, "Yes, I do." She says, "Okay, take one step forward." And I took a step forward, and she took a step forward with me. And we said, "Okay, let's let Jesus do the work from now on, eh?" You know. And I wasn't saved then. But I just believed in God. I just believed. I just believed it was him visiting me that day. And I just believed it. And I went to AA and I got real and I said, Hi, my name's Johnny and I'm an alcoholic. I haven't had a drink. 29 years have gone by and I still haven't had a drink. I haven't had a bomb. I haven't stuck anything in the arm for 28 and a half years. So, so I've been clean and sober a fair while, a day at a time. So we just sung that song, How Ironic. Now God's a good God. And I'm one crazy mixed up mother, I tell you, you know, and, and God even prepared me for this, you know, um, I didn't know I was going to do this till the other day. I've known Angus and Christine a little while, I've just met the lovely Lynn here. We're all mates, but see, this is the thing, we're all mates un under God's covering. Psalm 91 says, God gathers us under his wings. Am I right, Kerry? God says that in the Bible. And you know, for a bloke who was down and out, you know, my parents had died. Um, rest of the family didn't want to know me. And I could have spiralled and died, you know. And if I'd have died in that time, I would never have known Jesus. Let me tell you something that's really important. Um, you know, I was a no-hoper, a down-and-outer. And, um, you know, God really did some wonderful things in my life. He led me to a place um, where I became saved. You know, I stood on this bloke's doorstep and he prayed for me. And out of that, I got saved. I went to a church and I didn't know that God had already had a wife picked out for me. Praise God, how good is that? She was a missionary in the Philippines. You know, a couple of years went by and we got married. And I never ever thought I'd have anything like that. You know, the best I thought I'd ever be would be a dry drunk at best or somebody that just doesn't drink. But God, God gives us much more than that. He gives us a home. You know, he joins us up to somebody. You know, not, a lot of people do stay single, that's fine. But he did, he, he knew what I needed and what particularly needed. You know, he knits us in our mother's wounds for the right time. I just want to say in finishing that, you know, like, um, God's done some amazing stuff and amazing work even today. He's, I've had some amazing prayer, you know, because he, he's, a, he's a, a God of second chances. And 20th chances and 40th chances. Yes, 
you know, we in, in our current church um, in Geelong, we've got a slogan at the moment, come as you are, but don't stay that way. <laughs> Allow God to move you into what he wants to move you into. Yeah. Allow him to change you. You know, and um, to, to be honest, uh, it's the best move I've ever made. I've, I've been married 15 years to the one person, only by his grace, and the fact that she doesn't, you know, hit me out there to the rolling pin. But, <laughs> but no, it's fantastic. It's fantastic to be a Christian because I know what I've been saved from. I've been saved from an eternity without him. And an eternity without him I can't face. So thank you for listening to my story and thank you for listening to us sing. And uh, God bless you, each and every one of you, because you're very, very special to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you, John. John's actually um, preaching tomorrow at church, uh, down at Geelong Vineyard Church. So what an amazing story from nearly dead of alcohol and drugs. Now he's a preacher. That's amazing. Hi, Kurt. Good to see you, brother. Been praying for you. Um, we're going to sing one more song, and, and then um, we're going to do communion in a few minutes. I just want to say one more thing. Um, you need to belong to a church, because you can't do it on your own, can you, John? You can't do this life on your own. You've got to be with the family that God puts you in, and Kiri wants to say nothing. If you feel like... Um, ah, if you want prayer... Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Who are willing to pray for you. Nothing is too much for our God. He's able to do so much more than we understand. So if you feel like you want somebody to talk to or to pray for you, come on down. Thanks, Kerry. You're amazing, mate. Then sings my soul for Savior God to me. Great, thank you. Thank you, Angus. So, you know, wow. You know, now I passed that, used to sell drugs. Okay, okay, my story too. <laughs> really? Yeah, look, I sold a little bit many years ago. Um, but uh, many, many years ago. Um, but yeah, look, it's great to be here. And uh, great to meet John again. We've met before, I'm sure. And uh, we spoke earlier about that. But, um, you know, you, you know what I really, really hate? You know, I reckon that this just really, really sucks. It, 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 I, I, it sucks when we miss out on something good, you know, simply because, you know, we've assumed something that wasn't quite right. And, uh, you know, I, I remember back in the day where we used to have the old video players. You remember the old video players? I, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big NRL head, love rugby league. And uh, back in, in the day, I used to, I used to record uh, the, the Sunday night game, and then I would catch up with it on the Monday. And um, you know, one night my team uh, was playing, and so I've set the video up to record at the time it always come on. So I'm working with the assumption Channel 9 are gonna do the right thing, and they're gonna play at, at, the, at the time that they always play. And then the next day when I, when I went to watch my game, I caught the very end of the game. Talk about frustrating. <laughs> Talk about something that really, really sucks. You know, my team won and I didn't get to see, you know, how they demolished the opposition. <laughs> you know, I didn't get to see how they buried their heads into the ground. I didn't get to see how they, how they smashed them and bashed them and crashed them. You know, I didn't get to see how they, they did all that. And wow, man, I was just so disappointed. I just thought, wow, that really sucks, Channel 9. And that's, you know, not, not great. But what happened? was that I, I assumed, I didn't check into the truth for myself, I didn't check in and, and look and think and just double check and make sure, you know, that um, it's going to be on, you know, the time it always is. What they did, they played it a couple of hours early. Oh. <laughs> and I missed out because, because of, a, of a false assumption. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when it comes to, 
to God. You know, m many people miss out on experiencing the love of God simply because of some things that we we assume. You know, we assume that God is, you know, somehow, you know, distant and uncaring, and He's, you know, out there, and 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 you know, we we can miss, you know, what what God really intends for for our life. You know, there. You know, others, you know, we, we, we assume that God is, is angry with us because we've, we've committed so many, you know, wrongs in, in our life. You know, we've been, we've been unkind to too many people or we've stolen too many things or we've taken too many drugs or we've drank too much grog, John. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we, we assume that God wouldn't be interested in, in me because, you know, I'm, I'm just too low. I'm just nobody. I'm just nothing. You know, but, you know, to me, you know, the whole of life re revolves around, you know, these two verses of, of Scripture. And uh, John three sixteen and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, but that by believing they might have life or they might be saved in, in Him. And, and wow, you, you know, that, that tells us that, you know, God loves us so much. You know, when life doesn't make sense, God loves us. You know, when we're down and out, God loves us. And there, there's something that I, I refer to as the blessing of the involvement of God. Uh, in our life and the blessing of God's involvement in our life begins at this side of heaven another assumption we make is that we, we, we make that we have to wait until we get to heaven until we deal with God yep. you know we have to wait till we get to heaven until we can experience the love of this wonderful God we have to wait until we get to heaven you know to get there but Jesus said whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life and that everlasting life it begins this side of heaven it begins the moment we begin to, to trust our lives and our salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ. It begins the moment we receive Him into our life. Eternal life begins at that moment. And, we, and we, it's a life that, uh, as I said earlier, uh, it, it, it is a life that with the blessing of the involvement of God. You know, imagine going through a season of sickness with the blessing of God's involvement. Imagine going through a time when we're walking through a dark place. And the blessing of God's involvement leading us through. You know, how about, how about when we're, you know, we're just really experiencing the pain and the trauma of life, but doing it with the blessing of the involvement of God. In seasons of unemployment and lack, you know, but the blessing of God's involvement, you know, in our lives. And, uh, and, and this is what Jesus came to do. You see, you see, God's wrath or God's judgment was poured out upon Jesus upon the cross. And we're going to partake of communion. We're going to take, um, you know, some a broken cracker, which represents Jesus' body that was broken for you and, and for me. And we're going to drink of the cup, which represents the blood of Jesus that was shed to wash away all of our sin. The very thing that keeps us from the grace of God, our sin, has been washed away. The punishment of eternal separation from God has been uh, has been palm, passed off onto Jesus, and Jesus took that for us. Why? Because He loves us so much. So as we partake of communion, let's do so, uh, reflecting afresh, you know, upon the love of God. You know, when life doesn't make sense, God loves you. When you stuff up, God loves you. When your heart is hurting, God loves you. When people disappoint you, God loves you. Wherever we are in life, wherever we come from in life, you know, God loves you. And to me, to my mind, everything hinges around that. The love of God. Because it's about Jesus coming and dying and rising again so that we may live in Him. Glory to God. I might just pray and then I'll, I'll let are we, people coming forward to... Yep, yep. Okay, I'm going to pray and I invite you to come forward and, 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 uh, and, and take your communion this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the love of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that because Jesus went to the cross, that he died, that he, he shed his blood, that he rose again. Lord, we can experience you, Lord, in this life. Lord, we're not waiting until we get to heaven. Lord, we're not waiting until we're good enough. 
Lord, we're not waiting until we're strong enough. But Lord, we can experience you today, right now. Lord, even now, Lord, we can experience your touch. We can experience your love. We can experience you. And uh, Lord, as we do uh, take this communion, Lord, we do so in remembrance of you who loves us so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come. Come forward and, and uh, receive your communion this morning. The Lord bless you Glory to God. and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face before you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face all around you and within you. He is with you, he is with you in the morning and the evening and the coming and the going in your week. And rejoice it. He is with you. He is with you. He is for 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 you. I just feel that um, <clears throat> that song is a blessing and we, as, as we're singing it we just want to bless you and bless your families and, and bless your children and bless your, children, your, your, your children's children to God is a God of blessing He wants to bless us and you know in this turmoil I just feel like I want to just pray peace because it's so my that's okay I just want to pray out peace over everyone here and yeah, I'm just going to pray now. And Jesus, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you that you are here, that you're standing here with us. You're here with us right now. And, and Lord, I just ask you just to pour your peace out right over every person here, Lord. That, in the, that whatever's happening, if there's confusion, if there's stuff happening in their life, Lord, I pray that you would pour your peace out on them today. And we bless every person here, Lord. We bless their families. We bless their children. We, we just bless them, Lord, and we thank you for them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless everyone. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Lord, we ask for a special blessing upon Amen. this community of Love yeah. Run Square. Yeah. For every household, for every heart yeah. that comes through this place, for every person, Lord. We pray that by your Holy Spirit you would lift them up. That, Lord, the things of the world that would um, hold them down, Lord, would be a heavy burden upon them, Lord. In Jesus' name, our Lord, we ask that you would free them from these. That, Lord, the word of the truth of you, of the power of the name of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the love of our Father would be made manifest in this community, in this place. We ask that, Lord, in Jesus' precious name.